So, Peter, you've been telling us, telling me a little bit about um, the brain and how it functions and its effect on, on fear-based learning and thriving learning, that type of thing. Can you tell me a little bit about cognitive load theory and how that might affect how students learn in school? Sure. Cognitive load theory has um, is actually been around for quite a number of years and only recently has we started, to, we started to link this with neuroscience and see how does this relate to how the brain develops. Cognitive load, in a nutshell, can probably be described as the, the energy effect for us okay. to learn something. Mm -hmm. And that can be unpacked at least on three levels. That energy uh, uh, level that we need to invest in order to learn something or to engage in some material mm -hmm. seems to be linked to the content. Mm -hmm. It's linked to the pedagogy of the presentation. Sure and it's linked to the effort uh -huh. to remember. Mm -hmm. So if we look at these three individually, one, uh, the content. Consider, for example, uh, something simple like neuroscience. Neuroscience mm -hmm. is not difficult. It's so exciting. It's very interesting. Um, or uh, something uh, very complex like rocket science. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to learn rocket science, uh, uh, the concepts are quite complex. Now, in order to understand the concepts, it can be so daunting looking at all these concepts that some people go, I will never become a rocket scientist. It's just too <laughs> difficult. So content is a big issue. Uh, we'll get to unpacking this a bit further. Let's just move on to the next one, then we'll get back to the, the content. Mm -hmm. Second is the presentation. Mm -hmm. If you have a presenter presenting the rocket science in a way that you just go, I will never get my head around mm -hmm. this. This is just mm -hmm. too complex. The presentation itself uh, increases the cognitive load mm -hmm. and you sit through a lecture and you walk out and you go, I don't think this is for <laughs> me. So that has a big effect on cognitive load. Third is, uh, and that sits with the student, is the emotional effort or the cognitive mm -hmm. effort. Mm -hmm. Am I going to put a bit of effort in to get my head around this? Mm -hmm. Or uh, doesn't it make sense at all? Or we feel, I'm not sure if I want to do this. So there's a third level of cognitive load. Content, presentation, and effort. If we unpack that a little bit further, mm -hmm. uh, content can be unpacked in smaller chewable chunks mm -hmm. that we feel, okay, I can understand this bit of rocket science. And then maybe this bit, and eventually go, I think I have a really good understanding of some of this. So how we unpack content, quite important. So Peter, can you be a little bit more specific with regard to content? I mean, I know, for example, when teachers teach, we often use, we often try and tap different modalities. Are you sort of saying it might be better to just focus in on, say, maybe the visual modality or the auditory modality or the tactile? Very what are good, your thoughts very, around very good content? Question. Uh, again, that's part of the detail of content. It uh -huh. sits again on a few levels. One mm -hmm. is, uh, how do we build on prior knowledge? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a huge aspect that uh, educators constantly consider. How do we build a syllabus? Because mm -hmm. the syllabus basically is, what are the building blocks sure. for the brain in order to build on this, mm -hmm. in order to uh, learn something a little bit more complex, build on something else, and mm -hmm. expand into different fields. Uh -huh. So one aspect of content has to do with how we build the building blocks. Mm -hmm. Second is, what kind of modality do we use mm -hmm. when we introduce the building sure. blocks? Right. And the brain seems to tell us, and the neuroscience tell us, that uh, a multisensory activation mm -hmm. seems to be more powerful than a single mm -hmm. uh, sensory activation. Okay. Multisensory activation activates more neural networks at the same time and hence lower the mm -hmm. cognitive load mm -hmm. and enhance the learning experience. So Peter, can you tell me a little bit about presentation? That was your second point. Can you right. tell me what, how, what, what sort Absolutely. of difference that makes? So cognitive load can be increased through not helpful presentation styles or mm -hmm. decreased, meaning it enhanced learning. Mm -hmm. Uh, maximizing multi-sensory activation. Um, what we say, the way we say things, the enthusiasm that we sh uh, share information, mm -hmm. plus some engagement, uh, various activities, the variety of activities increase our load. Making notes while we're talking, uh -huh. uh, strengthen neural networks. Mm -hmm. I quite often say to uh, clinicians who attend my workshops, you never need to read your notes again, <laughs> but just making some notes 
enhance a cognitive network with a writing network and the motor skills, mm -hmm. and we learn better. So mm -hmm. memory is enhanced. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line with uh, the middle one of the three aspects of cognitive load is to maximize mm -hmm. learning, mm -hmm. make sure our presenta presentation style is uh, enthusiastic, we enjoy what mm -hmm. we do, and it's multi-sensory. What about motivation, Peter? Motivation is the, is the concept, doesn't matter what age we are, this makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm six years of age or 50 years of age, if something that we engage with makes sense, mm -hmm. we feel, I can use this, or <laughs> I would like to learn a bit more about this. And learning is enhanced. The science of motivation is the release of this chemical dopamine mm -hmm. that strengthen neural networks. And what mm -hmm. we found is uh, when we activate more of this release, uh, it strengthens the learning capacity, it, it strengthens the, the questioning capacity, and as a result, it enhances learning, mm -hmm. except when it's fear-based. Mm -hmm. Fear-based learning can also strengthen dopamine, but only to protect us in mm -hmm. order to survive, okay. and hence not a very helpful learning. So it can be motivational to feel threatened, but it's a very closed neural loop. Uh -huh. Real motivation activates the frontal cortical sure. systems and um, hence the fun effect is so powerful. We've, we've discussed some fascinating concepts from neuroscience today and the implications for education. I wonder if you would mind just summarising some of those key points again so we, we can go away with some clear ideas as to, as to what you've said. Sure. Mm -hmm. The essence of education to me can be summarised with one single word and that is how do we facilitate connections. Mm -hmm. The more we facilitate connections, the more the brain add bits of building blocks to new building blocks. In order to do this, it's not just a cognitive learning process, mm -hmm. it's an emotional learning process, it's a behavioral learning process, it facilitates an holistic change in who we are. Uh, neuroscience point towards a few basics in education. Remember the safety, remember to engage, remember to connect, and from there, the pedagogy of learning will just excel. Thank you very much, Peter. Thanks, Robin. <laughs>